remotely. Now, is it an incentive to move to the city? Because I've been hearing things like, oh, like businesses still want to move to LA. They still want to move to New York City. And I always ask myself, like, why, if you can still work remotely? I think it, it really just depends on the business for and what you offer in terms of services. For me, it's always best to be closer to your clients. Mm -hmm. And I think, especially with digital marketing, it's such a high ticket sale. We work on monthly retainers. And, you know, our clients are dishing out several thousand dollars a month it's important to make sure we're having like uh, for me at least i make sure i act, at least have monthly meetings with them like face to face and i think sometimes even with that digital aspect when it comes to retaining your clients um i've learned that nothing really beats that that human interaction so my business model you know it's really important to make sure that we're available to them mm -hmm. but some you know some businesses have the resources to be able to expand but then you got to think about it you know you're you're working remote you're doing business in a different state then you got like state taxes from that state you're also paying your federal taxes for your business in your state you know what i mean so sometimes it's like it's, it's like a give and take you got to choose what you're you're okay yeah. with doing and it's funny because i started i like digital marketing but when I became a business owner, you know, and like filed all that paperwork. And then I had to start paying tax on my business. It's like being a business owner in itself is a job and understanding how that works. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And it's not necessarily digital marketing, like what I got into and what I love doing, but it, you know, you end up learning a lot, especially with being a young entrepreneur and growing and understanding like how things work. So for sure. So that's a, to, to your, <laughs> to your very simple question. That's mm -hmm. a long answer. <laughs> so how did you get into digital marketing? So before did you work, like, were you working at a nine to five job? Uh, yeah, I was. And then I actually had money saved up. Um, and I ended up just like, not working for a little while which was okay um and i got served an ad from ty lopez and i just bought into it you know um but that was like the, the start of it i really haven't gotten any more information from him even though he i feel like he really pioneered the whole social media marketing like you know i'm not sure if you're familiar with it but um after that it just opened up a whole new world of like working remotely and stuff and i'm, I'm really glad i was able to like get on the the wheel before you know, a bunch of people started doing it and stuff like that. But were you always like sort of entrepreneurial? Were you always like, you know, oh, curious no. about creating your own business? Definitely not. I don't think, I, I don't know. Like, are you, I wasn't like, no. I, I went to college. Like I was trying to get hired. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Like, I had that same feeling. So literally I was super down with like minimalism, you know, I was like, yeah. I watched a movie fight club and I was like, okay. <laughs> I love this movie. I'm down. Like, I don't need to live. Like I can, be, I'm happy living in a cardboard box, whatever. I'm happy. Then after I graduated college, I got my first two jobs. I'm like, Oh wow, this is not cool. I don't like being told. What, I, mean, <laughs> I don't like being told what to do working nine to five, working like a robot. I just mm -hmm. want to be free. And I never thought about being an entrepreneur, never thought about creating my own business, never thought about that, but a switch just turned on and it just told me like, this is not for you try to do mm -hmm. something else. And yeah. I do believe that entrepreneurs, they can be born or you can have an epiphany, a moment, an occurrence where it yeah, just changes agree. your perspective, you know? And that's what happened I to agree. me. Yeah. That's, I mean, that was basically me. I, you know, I did the whole college thing. I went to school for psychology. So I think that kind of like applies to like every day, but I mean, if, if you can see it from my point of view, it was definitely a BS kind of thing I could do because my parents told me to go, you know, mm -hmm. I thought psychology was cool. So I knew I wasn't going to flunk out, uh, but I definitely ended up working retail. I was working retail in San Francisco um, at a department management position really, really young. I was actually making, uh, I think it was $70,000 a year at 22 mm -hmm. in like a really big city, which is really, really good. But you know, you're near New York. So you probably already know like 70 K doesn't get like, oh, no. <laughs> you in know, metropolitan areas now. The rent yeah. Is so, high. so, um, I was actually, uh, working right next to Facebook, Instagram, Google. Um, it's in this area called mountain view, which is, um, South of the city technically. Uh, and I mean, I did have a good job. I did have opportunity to grow. I mean, I didn't necessarily want to be working retail, unfortunately, but 
you know, it was just one of those things where I, I thought about it and I was like, you know what, like, if I'm going to do something, I should kind of start now, you know, but I, I didn't want to be an entrepreneur. I didn't want to own my own business. Um, but it just kind of turned into that, but I'm super happy it did. Cause I, I don't know where I'd be right now. Maybe I'd be in a better place. Who knows? But I'm very optimistic about what I'm doing now. So, so I'm, I'm pretty much on the same boat as you. You were on the fence of like not knowing what to do, rather going, stepping up in retail or creating your own business. Now, what was that one occurrence where you're like, okay, let me start this. Let me dive into entrepreneurship. Let me see what's all about. Well, you know, I did, it was basically learning a little bit more about digital marketing. And I did have a firm foundation of, um, because at the level of retail I was at in management, I did understand how businesses worked especially with labor laws and stuff like that. So, I mean, luckily for me, it wasn't too out of the blue to actually incorporate a business and then start from there. Um, I was just more concerned, which I think a lot of people are about like the stability. Um, but like I said, luckily I had, you know, money saved up and I was able to kind of like find myself. And I was mm -hmm. like, as long as I'm making those goals and just being more goal oriented and some other people telling me, what I need to work towards, then I'll always have stability. But it was really, I think it was a stability for me. I, I was really scared initially that I wasn't going to have control of my life and it was going to be really floppy and stuff. But I think that's what a lot of people are afraid of. Mm -hmm. So that's so, pretty much. So you, I feel like, yeah, a lot of people, they want to, it's very easy. Like, you know, when you go to high school, they tell you what to do. When you go to college, you know, it's given to you the assignments, the homeworks and all that type of stuff. When you take a job, they tell you what to do. But now as a like, small business owner, entrepreneur, you have to tell yourself what to do. And that can be kind of yeah. scary because you don't know, you don't know where it would lead to. You don't know if it's a good yeah. thing or a bad thing. You just have to learn and you don't know where your money is going to come from either next week, next year, next two years. And that's a, that's like the very scary thing. Now, mm -hmm. did you, have like a sort of plan like oh if this doesn't work out for me i can always go back to working retail well you know funny enough i didn't have a plan for me i was more like okay if this doesn't work out i can go live at my mom's house mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wasn't there wasn't like a plan in terms of like career i definitely knew i didn't want to go back to retail i didn't want to do retail i mean okay. I, don't, I don't know if anyone ever really wants to do retail you know what i mean mm -hmm. just that industry specifically um but no, I didn't. I didn't really have a plan. Actually, now that I think about it, you, you know, you're kind of scaring me. I'm, 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 <laughs> I feel like I just jumped off a cliff and uh, like Jesus take the wheel. But, um, you know, I think a lot of it just came uh, down to like my mindset. And like you said, I think it was just the goal setting. And it's true. I could lose all of my clients next month. I mean, technically I can't because they mm -hmm. signed contracts. They have to give me a 30 day notice, <laughs> but, um, I, you know what I mean? Like I could lose everything and not necessarily know, you know, where my next meal is going to be or, or whatever, but, um, it's the resilience and the perseverance. And I know that's super cliche, but you know, you're either going to do it yourself or you're not. One thing I like to point out though, is not everyone's made to be an entrepreneur. I can definitely say that. I think nowadays it's the term is really thrown around a lot, like side hustle this, hustle that, you know, um, but it takes a lot of grit and action to be a successful entrepreneur. And I think it's very trendy right now. And sometimes like it's really hard to like figure out who, who's actually doing it the right way, who's really successful about it and so forth. I don't know. How do you feel about that? I don't know why I'm asking you questions. No, no, no. It's good. I like it. Like I said, this is a, a very free flowing podcast. It's not very structured. <laughs> okay, so no. no, I definitely agree. A lot of people have entrepreneur on their bio and mm -hmm. fair game. Anyone can write that. Now there's a difference between entrepreneur and successful entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And you get to learn that as you watch their content, speak with them, et cetera. Right. You know? Yeah. So anyone can have that on their bio but it's just a big difference between yeah. being a good entrepreneur, but yeah, it's over like saturated. Everyone is trying to be an entrepreneur. I think it's a very cool thing, very trendy thing. Mm -hmm. And, but I love it too, because a lot of people are hustling. They're, they're starting to realize that, okay, I don't like school. I want to work on my own. And you see everyone on TikTok, really young kids creating their mm -hmm. own businesses. And it's crazy. Like seeing it's 16 great. year old, 
seeing six year olds creating their own their own eyelashes their own lip gloss their own stickers mm-hmm. and like yeah like they may not be making millions of dollars but they have yeah. the concept of making money you know on a regular basis and you know if that this fails they had that experience you know mm-hmm. i think there's a, a huge shift in it which is really liberating i guess you can say i, I like being around it i like the spirit of it um and i've learned i mean you mentioned tiktok i've learned so much from tiktok like i am addicted to it but i definitely was able to kind of get the algorithm to show me things that i want to see um and i've learned a lot like it, it's ridiculous and it's really cool to to see that circulating nowadays and i i don't really know what the shift was really i don't know if like how all of a sudden everyone's just like you know starting their own business but it's good it's good to feel like you're not the only one and i and yeah. i think you're right hustling is definitely a great um concept to adapt to Mm -hmm. so you mentioned that you saw um what was the guy's name i definitely heard it he ty lopez Lopez. yes yeah yeah. um no because i i also dabbled with with the digital marketing but i never went anywhere because to be honest i wasn't passionate about it um Mm -hmm. i guess long story short i i no one should ever do this but during my (laughs) like during my internship it was like a six-month internship yeah. And there were times that I wasn't like literally doing anything, like nothing, right? Um, I was like, damn, this is really boring. And the facility was pretty big, right? It was a pretty big mm-hmm. facility. And I remember this had a, a line piece of paper with like 100 names, 100 businesses. And I would literally call every single one during like my break, but my break would be extended by like another 30 minutes. And it would be like during like in the storage room. I'd call all these businesses and I was like, okay, out of a hundred, let's see if like five of them would reach out, let me talk to them in person and, you know, yeah, try to convince them to like hire me or, or whatnot. Right. I only had one person say yes to me. And that's because I kind of knew him. Mm-hmm. Everyone else that I did not know, I did a cold call basically, and it didn't yeah. go well at all. And so I tried cold emailing, still didn't work. But when I did work with like two people, I did realize that I personally didn't like it. And mm-hmm. that, could, that just made me realize like, okay, there's so many ways to make money, but you have to make sure that when you do it, you have to enjoy the process as well, you know? Oh, definitely. And with digital marketing, it was one of the first times that I experienced working on your own, creating a business on your own. Um, and yeah, it, it wasn't a Ty Lopez course, but it was someone else on YouTube that really convinced me that it was something that I can potentially do potentially love and do for a very long time but unfortunately that wasn't the case um i don't yeah. know how it was for you like to, when you, once you watched that ad did you just like that did you d- dive in or was it something else did you have other ideas like say e-commerce or job shipping that you wanted to pursue well you know what to your point i do think it's really important that you like what you're you're doing i think that's what drove me to do it but ironically when I didn't know what it was like you don't get enough information from an advertisement i mean i was intrigued mm. you know what i mean but i what my idea of what i thought i was going to be taught was like on a different <laughs> level like i didn't think it i seriously thought i'm not sure if you, i mean you're probably familiar with it but when you talk about social media marketing i'm thinking like instagram manager like i'm gonna make the coolest <laughs> pictures like you know i was a total like girly girl about it um and i was like yeah like let's learn how to do it got the course and I'm like Facebook ads what (laughs) (laughs) like you know and um because I did work in retail and it's very much a numbers game um like I said especially at the level I was at you know you come in you look at the numbers you look at the metrics and you apply it to the business you change stuff you try to you know make revenue off of that or profit um or whatever you know aspect that you need to do better in I like looking at that I like looking at charts um and that's what that course was for me i was like this is not what i thought it was like i it wasn't make cool pictures make you know what i mean mm-hmm. it was like you know and if you've ever been in the back in the facebook ads google you know what i mean um youtube linkedin and it really is uh like a crm and it's like it's legitimately like graphs and understanding you know how to optimize on stuff and that's what sold me and i like that and so I think it's a good thing as an entrepreneur that you didn't go that route if you weren't interested in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also met 
a lot of people, um, you know, colleagues that are in the digital realm, I guess you can say, because, you know, digital marketing, it's vast. Um, who have found certain aspects of digital marketing that they've liked better and they've kind of gone with that. Like I have, you know, uh, a colleague, he really liked videography because he started doing, you know, video ads and stuff for uh, his clients. And now he like owns his own like videography business. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So I think it's really cool. You can go like a lot of different ways. There's a lot of people that I know are in digital marketing, but they really focus on web development because they like website stuff, you know? So, um, it was really cool. I, I, I did enjoy the course. It kind of got me started, but haven't really touched on Ty Lopez anymore. I think um, now that I like it, I do continue to learn. As long as you like something, it's, it's good because if you have that like want to learn and get better, you'll be more successful in your business. So for me, it's cool because I can, you know, I'm always constantly reaching out to people, learning more stuff, you know, YouTube videos, whatever it is, courses, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah, that's pretty much how it worked out for me. So from that moment of learning digital marketing, taking that course, how long did it take you to get your first client? You know what? I, uh, I wasn't actively looking for clients. The, the course itself was actually very long. It should have taken like four months to complete. To be honest, I didn't even think I finished it. <laughs> um, but because at, at a certain point, you, you know, you kind of like, all right, I got this. Like I need to like start putting it into action because if I just keep learning it, you know, and not like actively doing it, it's just going to like deteriorate in my mind. So, um, it was pretty long to like finish the course, but I just through being excited about it, um, and talking to like friends and family and stuff, I actually landed my first client and I was a client of hers, um, who was, she was an esthetician. She has a small business. Um, and so I used to get facials from her and because I was so excited and I was always talking about what I'm doing, she hired me on the spot during like one of my facials. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really dope, but, uh, it's, it's another part of sales that I think a lot of people don't know this. Um, I, I'm not sure how it's working out for other people, but when you talk about high ticket, you know, even though she was a friend, it's not like I charged her $500, you know, um, my first client, she was on a $1,500 retainer. Um, and it's like, even though that might not seem like a bunch of money or to some people it does, when you're asking people to give you that much money, it, this high ticket sale, it's not something that comes immediate. You really do need to create relationships with your clients. Luckily for me, I already have a relationship with this person, but moving forward from her, all my other clients, it was definitely relationship based. It was something that I knew, like I wasn't just gonna get a sale over the weekend, you know? I had to meet people, like plant the seed, type of thing Mm -hmm. and then like let it grow and then you know you'll get a client in two months or something like that so it's 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 a law of average game yeah you know something that really confused me was like okay say a small business or any business hires you to manage your their social media or digital marketing right Mm -hmm. now as a business owner you might be like okay i want results in a matter of two weeks three weeks now, mm-hmm. in your position, I know that might be extremely difficult. Things take time, you know. Now, mm-hmm. when people say that, when small business owners tell you that they want results almost immediately, like, what do you tell them? Or is that even possible? Well, it, it is possible and it has happened, um, but it's not something that we guarantee. We don't guarantee results. No one should ever guarantee results, but um, it does sound silly to say that we're not going to get results because obviously if we're not getting the client results, then we lose our jobs. They're going to fire us. Right. Um, I think with anything, even in like your personal life, (laughs) it's really important to set expectations. And the big thing with companies outsourcing other companies to do things for them. So I'm a third party company that does digital marketing for other businesses is that they're outsourcing you because they don't know, you know what I mean? And you kind of need to hone in on that and let them know like, Hey, I'm the professional, like, this is what we can expect. These are the certain benchmarks we can hit. Um, and then we can deliberate off of that. So I have had clients where like, they're coming to me. They've never actually said like, we need results in a week. But if you're onboarding them, they've like came and in their voice on the phone, on the call, in the meeting, you can tell like, they're like, you know, we need more business. Like it has to happen now kind of deal. And um, I feel like if you're really in tune with just people in general, you can kind of get that from people. And that's when it's the appropriate time to let them know what the expectations are. Mm -hmm. I've had my fair share 
of not doing that adequately and I've lost clients. Um, and I've overworked myself trying to get like unrealistic results in like an unrealistic amount of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but you know, if you're the professional in it and they're not, you need to trust yourself and understand that it's okay if the client isn't always right. Yeah. Cause you know, 99% of the time they're not. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so most of the time, is it like, okay, the management of their social media or is it like result driven or a bit of both? Like, how do you kind of, you know, tell them that what are you going to give them? Like what, what sort of packages per se? I think there's so, there's so many ways that you can take this, you know, you can just work with their social media, you know, help with the branding over a long period of time or work with the Facebook ads so they can potentially get more clients or sell mm -hmm. more products. So my company is ROI based. So we do um, specialize in advertisements. We only offer three packages, but even our lowest package does include advertisements, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, because, uh, you know, some digital marketing agencies, they don't specialize in ads. Maybe they really do just specialize in like uh, social media management. Um, which isn't necessarily advertisements or they'll specialize in like Google SEO, you know what I mean? Um, so we're a full agency. We offer pretty much everything, but we specialize in that ROI. So we are looking for monetary results. Um, and you want to know what, I'll be totally honest. It's funny that you say that because we qualify we call qualify all of our potential clients. Not everyone's the right fit for us. And if the potential client doesn't already have a strong branding behind them um more than less we we won't take them on and how do you measure because that like what do you we do audits but usually it's just like going through you know their business numbers already like what what does their digital presence already look like you know if we're going to be for example, we actually focus on um, plastic surgeons and anyone who, uh, a solo practitioners who do elective surgeries. And so when you talk about plastic surgeons, I mean, as a doctor, you know, hypothetically, you do one nose job and you're being paid like $10,000 from that. There's a lot of doctors out there that don't necessarily have a good brand representation behind them, but they still have a running business. But since we focus on digital brand representation, if there's just like absolutely like no cohesiveness to their customer experience, no brand story or something like that, if, if they, if they don't even have an Instagram account, we're not going to start from scratch. Um, we work with clients who are already uh, excited about being available on social media. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then we focus on their excitement and then we basically use that to create more revenue for them. I see. So it's like, yeah, if someone's like completely just is like a wall off social media, we're not going to yeah. be like, oh, well, we're <laughs> going to grow your account from zero. That's just stupid. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. If anything, we would have to charge that person more. Yeah. So they're just not a good qualifying brand for us. So we're really honest with that. Mm -hmm. So basically you don't want to like have those companies start from scratch with, with their social media. Because yeah. That is going to take time. Something yeah. That's we're more not trying to, yeah. We're not trying to start with like a new company like we're not you know because also with that and being a business owner you have to remember like there's a lot of steps you need to take to continue to grow your brand and we technically don't own their business so we don't have a say in a lot of those big decision making things that are actually going to affect our work so if they're mm -hmm. completely brand new we just can't be a part of that you know they have to at least have something established um, yeah. that we can work on and, and work towards. Like if they don't have an email list, we like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you need to be able to do something to like yeah. some point where we can just like make it better, you know? So, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm assuming that you've worked with like multiple, like multiple businesses right now mm -hmm. in that case, like how do you feel about working with multiple businesses, learning their strategies? And, you know, I always feel like if you work with multiple businesses, you get to get a lot of insight on how to each industry works, you know? So I'm assuming that you got like a plethora of like information on, you know, how business A or business B works, how to run Facebook ads, depending on where they're located or who their target audience is, right? So how, mm -hmm. many, how many businesses in total have you, have you worked with? Um, probably about 10 different ones where, who are on our packages. Actually, mm -hmm. when COVID hit, we started this um, like social media growth thing um mm -hmm. which is like a lower kind of deal so we don't really take on their whole digital presence 
uh, and we've gotten clients from that as well, but that really is just like more of an Instagram specific kind of package that we offer. I was actually really good in making sure we were very niche specific. Um, we, I've never done restaurants. Um, we've never done, yeah, we've never done technically e-com, even though our clients do sell e-commerce stuff, but we haven't done like solely e-com clients. Um, we definitely stayed in the beauty cosmetic industry, but I can tell you though, when I landed my first plastic surgeon, like that wasn't an eye opener because the amount of stuff that I had to learn, I swear I have, I have an indie, like I'm a physician. I'm literally a doctor because you have to learn so much about their business that like, it would have been so difficult to then take on like a restaurant because then you have to learn so much about their business. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you have to be an expert in the area, the industry that you're representing and so you know when you're talking about doctors and stuff like that like it it is there's so much stuff like i could probably give someone a nose job or a facelift like legitimately that's how much (laughs) i've learned from like my clients and just like you know instagramming stuff like um and just being in like we film procedures like i can tell you yeah. exactly where to cut that for, could like, be a side hustle things. maybe doing those jobs yeah mm. <laughs> you need those jobs <laughs> no i never but, that um it's so it's it's just so much information that i already i feel like when i learned that landed that client i already knew that yeah. i couldn't like i was like okay you're either going to stick with this industry or you're going to do other industries because it would have just been too much to like go to a different industry and then relearn what they're about, you know, and it's really difficult. And it's funny because I don't think I've ever really met any other digital marketer that works with so many different brands. Like I've always heard about it, but I've never Mm -hmm. actually met one. I feel like I always meet people and they're like, no, we work for dentists. We work for surgeons. We work, we do real estate. And, um, I think it's a really good thing to like monetize. And so I'm glad I, I, didn't make that mistake that was one mistake that yeah. i didn't make yeah so you think it's a good idea to like stick with one industry not others because like you said you have to relearn everything mm-hmm. and you can't Definitely. it's not a cookie cutter thing where like you can do the, fa- the same facebook ads with one industry to the other it's totally different right yeah oh definitely it's not cookie cutter at all and it's funny though um to that point even i have clients in dallas so i'm in houston i have clients in dallas um and even just working for those clients out there and we're both still in texas totally different approach like the people respond to ads differently xyz like it's nuts so yeah i think it's really important to be very industry specific so i i can i was gonna say like so with facebook ads it's really important to you know have a different strategy depending on where you're actually placing those ads right yeah, I mean, we don't go into it assuming that we need another another strategy. You know what I mean? Like, we obviously do what we know works best. But, you know, when you go into, like, the ads manager account and then you start seeing the results that you're getting, you can narrow it down to, like, which, you know, demographics are responding to it best. You know, what ad copy works best. So what happens is after you look at the overall results, then we start just replicating the stuff that is working good and Mm -hmm. then you just you know after time you just realize like oh wow this is a different strategy than this client um and they're only three hours away from each other i think that is one really big thing you know i love grant cardone for example and he always preaches like don't try to freaking reinvent the wheel like never do that just do what works best proven strategies if it's already working don't try to fix it like you don't have to reinvent the wheel you just have to make it better Mm -hmm. you know so I think that's a really good thing to live by. <laughs> it so makes my job easy. When you, so you're working for an agency, right? I own the agency, but yeah, I work for myself. Okay. Now, how do you look for, for clients? Is there a point where like now the ball is rolling and they find you? Like, is there a lot of referrals now? Only referrals. Only done referrals. I've actually thought about doing advertisements for um getting more clients and it's just it's not that it hasn't worked I just haven't even done it because the thing about referrals is especially at the end of the day like I can only manage like 10 clients with our outsourced contractors if we go anything over 10 or like 12 
like I'm going to have to start literally hiring people because right now we only work with um, outsourcing contractors, people that I know though. Yeah. And then those people work on the clients all together. Right. Um, with that being said, ref- there's just something about referrals. Like if you tell your friend, like, yo, this place is really dope. Go your friends most, most likely going to go and already going to go in with a positive um, attitude because the someone that they trust referred right dude you can you can go straight off that like and then that's what i'm saying though is that the relationships are really important so we go in already knowing that you're friends of a client that we have we're gonna we're gonna give you something extra we're gonna treat you good because that you came from someone that we love as well and it's if you know if you don't like people don't get into digital marketing like you know i mean people annoy me like don't get me wrong but like it is a people type industry um and those relationships are really really important and so i've been able to thrive my business just off of referrals i've actually had digital marketers come up to me telling you you're not scaling your business enough like you know but i guess each their own Mm i don't know but i think referrals are fire like and they stick like those people really try to work with you so i like it now when you work with a new business is it like okay is there a certain period of time that you were, that you work with them until you have to find another business, another referral? Because it's not going to be, I think, you know, if you work with a gym membership, for example, right. And you manage to fill their gym at maximum capacity, you know, good business for them. They probably not going to need you anymore. Right. So you have to look for another business to work with right now. Has that happened to you? Um, you actually, to your point, you are right. Um, I actually do have a client in one, one of the ones in Dallas, that's actually what happened, uh, to me is we basically filled up their schedule. And, but the thing is, I think a lot of these clients know, like, if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't have had that schedule filled. And then, so they, you know, put the responsibility on you to continue to keep it filled because obviously, you know, when you're talking about appointments and um, anything of that nature, like people can fall off. So it it makes my job easier, but they don't necessarily want to get rid of you just Mm -hmm. because they've hit capacity. A lot of my clients, I've been a part of their business expansion actually because we've done so well. So for example, that one client in Dallas is now hiring two more employees. Uh, They already have one and they're moving to a bigger space, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually have a plastic surgeon out here in Houston who just moved to a bigger space as well and hired several new nurses. Um, So it's really cool to be a part of that experience. And and the fact that I'm an entrepreneur working with other entrepreneurs as well, um, I think it gives for a lot of trust and stuff. So we've never hit that issue before, but... Mm -hmm. I think that could be an issue that could happen to anyone. Definitely. Yeah. yeah it's not like a, a weird thing to say, but we haven't, we haven't. Mm-hmm. Came, so encountered with that. how does your day look like? Dude, don't even get me started. <laughs> There's so <laughs> much stuff. I, I mean, I, I'm sure you already know, like you can set up automations for stuff. So usually um, in the beginning of the month, we try to set up automations. We do automations for Instagram posts, Facebook posts, um, obviously uh, emails if we need them. Um, and then the advertisement part of it um, isn't necessarily automated, but you try to get it set up, whatever sales you're doing for the month, stuff like that, get the funnel system down. But when I tell you every single day, something just pops up. It's not like when I got into this, I did have this, I'm not sure if it's naive. I did have this perception where I'm like, oh, I'm going to barely work and make a lot of money, (laughs) you know? And I think a lot of people want to do that, but it's no, like you have to work. First of all, I dream about Facebook ads. I literally have nightmares sometimes. So I can't get a good night's sleep. Facebook ads? yeah, like something going totally wrong. I'm uh, always like anxious. So <laughs> there you go. Like I, I lost my good night's sleep from that. Um, and then uh, I'm always doing graphics somehow. I don't know how I always end up doing someone's freaking graphics. Um, even though we do have someone who does graphics. But like I said, if a client needs something and I can't get a hold of a contractor, I'm the mm-hmm. one doing it, you know? Um, also, I should probably start my own e-commerce business because I freaking like, I have so many Shopify access, so many Shopify stores, fixing discounts, updating pages, stuff like that. It's ridiculous. Um, 
and pretty much other than that we do try to be like literally active other than like automations we do try to actually like respond to people on instagram and stuff like that and, and uh, there's like that customer service aspect that we give our clients mm -hmm. um so they don't necessarily always have to be on like their ig and stuff like that uh so that's pretty much my day and honestly like i'll have a to-do list and i c there are days where i could be done you know by like 2 p.m but there's also days where you can just continue to maximize and I just always choose to continue to maximize. So I pretty much work from waking up all the way until mm -hmm. I go to sleep, but like, I love it. Like that, you know, uh, yeah. that's who I am now. So it's, it's cool. But I can say if you want to be an entrepreneur and you don't want to work, it doesn't, that doesn't mix. It's like water and oil. Like yeah. you're, you're gonna have to work. <laughs> like, so it's, it's a little, sometimes when I like bump into people, be like want to own their own business i'm like it's not going to be easy you know it's very very reward rewarding but it's not necessarily like a walk in the park mm -hmm. so i'm yeah i'm pretty much busy uh, are you busy all day am i the only one who's like busy <laughs> like i'm gonna be real with you i don't even call myself an entrepreneur i'm just a what i'm doing right now i just started like several months back and just creating a lot of content of like entrepreneurs mm -hmm. doing podcasts writing articles making videos and what i'm trying to do here this it kind of create like a death jam of like entrepreneurs and create content mm -hmm. of like young millennial Gen Z entrepreneurs so that if people, anyone listening can kind of get some inspiration or if they know their stuff already kind of use this as a resource to do X, yeah. Y, and Z. You know what I mean? So I, 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 yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even an entrepreneur and I'm going to say that to be honest, but it does take time though. Let's put it that way. It is where any, anything that you do, it takes time though. That is oh, no, definitely sure. work. Yeah. yeah. I just, I, it just like flabbergasts me sometimes how people try to like chill and stuff like that. I'm like, no, you got to put some effort into it. That's how, you know, you'll start seeing results and stuff like that. It, it's funny you said that though, because um, I checked out your podcast. Absolutely love it. And like a lot of the people you've um, like interviewed, like yeah. I've like encountered them on social media as well. And like have reached out to them like before. And like, I, I think really. it's really cool. Like you're doing so great. Uh-huh. And I love all the stuff that you have out there. I think we need that, like, as a generation is those inspirational, you know, outlets and stuff like that. People need no, guidance, for sure. man. Yeah. I no, love yeah. it. I love I just, what you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's just that, yeah, there's so many ways of, like, making money, you know, there's a marketing, e-commerce, and, you know, for a newcomer who doesn't know what to do, I think that if they look at the podcast or the articles or the social media and they look at each in the, every individual, including you, you know, be like, oh, I like what she's doing. Let me try that out. And if they don't yeah. like it, they can see someone else's, you know, content, video, yeah. whatever you want to call it, and be like, oh, I like that. Let me try that. So I'm just yeah. trying to create like a resource or a library of like young oh, entrepreneurs. I love it. Because if you think about it, I was speaking with this the other day with someone, and we we're like, yeah, if an old person were to say the exact same thing I was telling you, you probably won't listen to them. But the fact that you're listening to someone that's our age, a millennial, mm -hmm. Gen Z, you know, you're going to listen to them. Like the best analogy. It's relatable. Yeah. The best analogy I can think of like, okay, if your dad or your mom tells you something, they don't do it. You're not going to listen. But if your older brother or your older sister tells you like, hey, like you shouldn't be doing that. For some reason, you're going to listen because, you know, it's very relatable. You're very close yeah. to each other. And there's a huge generational gap that I think that we don't want to like mess with like i think if that's the right term mm -hmm. but with yeah. millennials gen z we kind of you know stick close we're we're bros you know whatever yeah and we just listen to each other and i think with information being everywhere now i don't care how young you are you can literally learn anything and you got to take everyone yeah. seriously nowadays because information's in abundance oh yeah it, there, there's so many resources out there and it, i think it's so important to make sure you capitalize on that and actively search for it um, because it could really be like the make or break of like your career and stuff like that, whatever you want to get into. But it's funny you mentioned like Gen Z and millennials, because I have two younger sisters. I'm the oldest and our youngest one is actually a generation Z. Um, and it's, it's just interesting because I feel like even though, um, she's 10 years younger than me, but we still understand each other a lot more than say like, you know, an older cousin or like you know, an older friend or like a grandma and grandpa and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, you do need guidance though. That's why I like what you're doing because it it's very straightforward and to the point. 
I think with so many resources, we can easily get drowned and accidentally go the wrong direction or something that we didn't think that we were getting into because it, you know, it's just, you go on Google, okay, maybe you're going to click, only click on like the first three links. But if you look at the very top, there's like any search you ever do on Google, there's always like millions of results, you know what I mean? And so it's just kind of like having that guidance and stuff like that is super cool. Same thing with YouTube and you know, the internet's awesome, but I still think we can drown each other out. And so I think it's really cool to like stick together. Um, like, you know, these young yeah. hustlers and stuff like that, helping mm-hmm. each other out. I think it's absolutely great. Yeah. Funny story is like not too long ago, I had like a family friend uh, come over and it's my mom's friend. She has like a kid who's like 18, right? This is about mm-hmm. to go to college. And we were, we were talking and I was saying like these slang words, like, oh, that's dope uh like bay boy you know i was like wait you you, sp- you talk like that and like i'm, I'm 24 now I was like yeah like <laughs> we grew up like talking like this you know it's like yeah we're, in, we're next to new york city the slang kind of trickles down to stanford connecticut and we speak yeah. like this you know and it's like oh wow i think he was assuming that i'm gonna be like more proper you know yeah, but yeah no it's like <laughs> i i speak the same like slang and like i think that's why we can connect so much with like the younger folks the words you know? and stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Totally agree. hundred percent. Yeah. You're so right. It, it's on. really funny. Mm-hmm. So, so you're super busy and other days were like, you have, you kind of have time to yourself because as an entrepreneur, I always feel like, okay, yes, you're extremely busy. You have to work to maintain your business and scale. But as an entrepreneur, there are times where depending on what your position is, you could have a week, a month off because you're doing so well off. Now, are you kind of in that position or are you that type of person that I just want to hustle, 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 work, work, work? Because not everyone wants vacation, let's be real. People just yeah. love working, you know? And that might be you. I can, I can definitely say with like being your own boss, there is freedom that comes with it. Now, I naturally like working, but I like, so it's like second nature to me to just like, you know, hop on Facebook, hop on, you know what I mean? And like check out stuff. Um, But a couple of weeks ago, I took a vacation, like regular random vacation to San Diego for a whole week to see my family. Like it was spare the moment kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, If I wake up sick, I don't need to work. You know, sometimes I get really like stuck in the Netflix (laughs) and it's not necessarily a bad thing if I'm not working. Um, And it it happens often. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't think I really worked yesterday to be honest but uh for the most part uh like on the daily I'm I'm very like oh I need to check it but I like it you know what I mean no, like I, I I like being like that I um, mean that's just how I am but yeah I mean I still have like a lot of freedom and I can definitely say a lot more freedom than I did when I was nine to five mm-hmm. like gonna, easy yeah I was gonna ask you how important is like automation and outsourcing Um, I think that's more of like, not necessarily a digital marketing type thing, but I think that's more of like a business type thing. Um, I like automations because it alleviates me of time, but Mm -hmm. of course being me, I find something else to like fill in that time. Um, but, uh, I think outsourcing is also a way to alleviate time and stress. And I think that that's really important as well because, yo, this stuff isn't easy. Like, I I don't know what to say. You know, we get a lot of clients sometimes that think even creating a graphic, like, even though it's fun to do stuff like that, you can create one graphic. It could take you 45 minutes to an hour. You know, Mm -hmm. you, even if say you're a smaller agency, you only have two clients, you're spending like an hour, um, to make a, a graphic. If you have to make three graphics, four graphics, that's like half your day. You need to spend the next four hours on a different client. So mm-hmm. in that case, like, I would say, well, why don't you outsource it? You know what I mean? No, yeah, it yeah. alleviates time to like do other stuff. So I think it's more of a business thing. Like, um, is that option something that you should be doing? And then, but if you are outsourcing, you also don't want to deplete yourself of all of your expense money. You should be, if you're going to, if, if you outsource so much where you just literally don't have to work throughout the day, you should be searching for new clients. Yeah. You know what I mean? You should continue think- to try to grow. Uh, yeah, I think everyone working in their own business has like a specialty, you know, it's going to be very mm-hmm. hard to do everything at once, you know? Yeah. I'm pretty sure like you use like some tools, like you don't manually post everything for your, for your client's business. You probably have tools to post at yeah. this time, 
and which yeah. post to post at which time, right? Because if not, you're going to be wasting a lot of time. Exactly. Now, like, what what tools do you use actually? Time. What tools do you use to like uh, automate in that respect, like to post uh, at a certain time? Buffer is like the the best freaking tool ever. Um, they have an agency plan that I think is like a hundred dollars but they also have something that's like fifteen dollars a month i think um and i'm actually partnering with them which is really cool i don't know if it's like top secret they didn't tell me <laughs> uh but they're coming out with like these integrations similar to shopify to be able to see like your post insights and then kind of um integrate like your instagram shop and find out like did any of your posts turn into uh aid in any conversions and stuff like that so they're hoping to roll that out within the next few years which is super cool and i was okay. able to help them out with it uh so mm -hmm. i do like buffer there are a lot of other options but i personally like buffer for automating posts okay and you can use that for any number of like businesses right if you have that that agency um uh, plan right obviously um, even even the smallest plan uh i don't I mean, obviously I signed like, a long time ago. I haven't looked at it, but I think even the smallest plan allows you to have up to eight accounts logged in. And so it includes Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, I think they do have a Pinterest one as well. So it, it's really, I, I think it's a really powerful tool to have. Um, but I, you know, what's funny, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of agencies that I know they actually don't do like, social media per se because social media in itself does take a lot of time and there's not necessarily any results associated with posting something do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. um obviously like you make your post intentional but you know it's not necessarily going to turn into a conversion this is where like you put effort into your ads but ads are one-off thing you know you run the ad uh or the sales funnel or the campaign that you're doing and then you wait for the results you you know look at the results you change it up wherever way you want but when it comes to like posting it's like have to create the content you know what i mean you have to make sure it's engaging you have to post it and it's actually when it, it just takes so much time so that's definitely one of my biggest tips is if you do have an apc and you are doing social media automate it like okay, that makes automate sense. it yeah now, yeah, yeah, I'm assuming you do like almost everything by yourself. There's so many tasks out of that's finding new clients, communicating with them, doing the posts, creating the graphics, creating the ads. Now, how do you kind of allocate your time between those tasks? Like, what do you think is the most challenging thing working as like in, in your, with your own agency? Um, I think the most challenging thing would be content creation just because of the amount of time that it takes and also just to create that content um like i said i work with doctors so content creation can actually be really difficult because you know you think of a plastic surgeon you're like well take pictures of the surgery that's not exactly the easiest thing to do especially when you're talking about consent and stuff mm -hmm. and then when so if you want to be like active on social media to you know at least 30 to 31 days out of the month it, especially when you talk about visual platforms, because other than Twitter, everything's pretty much a visual platform. Getting that content, creating it, editing it um, is probably, you know, the most challenging because sometimes you just got to think of stuff, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> um, too. But the most daunting task is making sure that they get results because that's our USP of the business, um, which is making sure that you're actually making that return on the money that you're spending on us. The cool thing is we don't, we're only several couple thousand dollars a month. You know, when you work with surgeons, you can sell like one thing or get one person to book one procedure and you've kind of made up that money because they're, they're high ticket sales. Um, but you still want to make sure that your clients are happy about your service and stuff like that. So I, yeah. I feel like that's the most like daunting thing on me, but honestly, content creation has to be the most challenging. Yeah, that makes but sense. I have over the span of like having this agency, I've made so many connections and honestly, outsourcing work has it, just been amazing. And the really cool thing is I don't even outsource to American companies. Like I have a homie out in South Africa in Namibia. He does a lot of the engagement for our clients. You know, our web developer, all of our clients um, that we get onto Shopify and we have a web developer that, that does them. He lives out in the UK. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm making all of these connections like all over the world and it's, it's helping all of us out and it's super cool. So it's like, even if I do have to create graphics, you know, 
I do have a graphic designer in Houston, um, you know, who does my personal graphics. He can do other graphics if I need him to. Uh, so it's like, I do do all the work being a solopreneur, but it's, we, I have things in place where I don't necessarily have to take on that, that work yeah. all the time. I think if I were to say the the one thing that I have to make sure I do is definitely the ads. Mm-hmm. I think everything it, can be outsourced. It's everything definitely in our form, you know, finding the correct resources, you know, either mm-hmm. the right tool to use, the right person to work with you, and the, you know, the right contractor. It's definitely in our form to to do that, finding the right people to help you scale your business and do the right job, you know. You just can't yeah. hire a random person. You have to know what to do. Oh, definitely. And then once you have that spare time, work on the ads, work on engaging with the clients, you know, because mm-hmm. you know, there's so many things that are tactical, but also psychological learning how to exactly. talk. Like you said, if you don't, if you can't deal with people, then this industry, digital media marketing isn't for you, you know? Yeah, definitely. I totally agree. Yeah, it, it is. You um, having having those relationships are important. It is kind of scary. Technically I can piss off one of my contractors and, you know, I don't know if other people do this, but because my, a lot of my contractors don't even live in the States. I mean, if they go like, if they ghost me, (laughs) like (laughs) I'm just ghosted, like I can't, I can't do anything about it. So it is really important to like have that relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and be able to like level with them and make sure you guys are on the same page. But yeah, if you're not a people person, you're not going to be able to do it because Mm -hmm. you got to be able to work with other people. So for creating content, they say you're working with someone out of town or in a different state and you need to take pictures, but you're not there physically. How do you take those pictures? Do you hire someone in a local area to do that for you? So in terms of content creation, like videography and stuff like Mm -hmm. that, uh, we do contract or outsource professional photographers or videographers to go into the business and do it. Okay. Yeah. That was puzzled me. No, but also um, to you, like your earlier question though, about working with people like out of state, that's also a big reason why we try to be relatively available um, to our clients. Like I don't work with people in Arizona or, and I don't work with people in Utah. I work with people in Texas and mostly in Houston, um, mm-hmm. because I do like to be there during like shoots and stuff like that, you know? So yeah, every client, a part of our packages, they get once a month, at least once a month photo shoot. Okay. Um, so yeah, I will drive out to Dallas and be there for that photo shoot. Um, obviously if we're in Houston, you know, I live downtown is wherever mm-hmm. that is. Um, but it, it's, it's important to me, you know, some, some digital marketers that, you know, they're not too concerned with that. I am, you know, a videographer and a photographer, they're probably one of the biggest expenses if we have to outsource it, you know, mm-hmm. um, on that level. So it's, it's better sometimes to just get it done in house. Yeah. Now on a personal yeah. like level, what's like your ambition? Now, do you want to scale this, you know, hire another partner to get more clients or do you kind of have other business ventures that you like to pursue? Maybe even your e-commerce brand, like you kind of mentioned before. You know what? I just started to uh, create my own course and it's supposed to be coming out in January. Um, I personally love digital marketing, but I don't think I necessarily have a want to create like this giant, you know, national business. Mm -hmm. Um, I definitely want to shift something into like a more passive income, um, which the course will let me do that. And then I can obviously have more freedom with that because I don't have to physically be available to, you know, run ads and stuff like that. Um, But I do want to get back. And one thing that I want to do, especially when I go to New York, um, is partner with universities uh to work at my agency to get people to intern and learn digital marketing hands-on with clients that i currently have and uh you know because i think a lot of people are actually starting to go to school for digital marketing and you know i went to college uh but i don't necessarily feel like you going to school for digital marketing is the most effective sometimes i heard that and nowadays like in school they teach you old school stuff not the new stuff, like, no. Because it's difficult. I mean, like, and, and I, it's not that I, I feel bad exactly, but I definitely think digital marketing is one of those things where you don't necessarily have to go to school for, but 
um, I mean, people are taking the courses and I feel like they need hands-on experience. So I definitely want to be able to like partner with schools with that. I don't, I, it, it like digital marketing changes every month. Yeah. If now not, TikTok is like, into the mix, right? They got to utilize that. Yeah, exactly. So it's just kind of like by the time that gets into the schooling system, like the university, especially in the, you know, you've been to college. Like I remember I had professors that they would just talk about themselves. <laughs> like I don't even know if we like followed a curriculum. Like it was ridiculous. So it's like how by the time it gets into the school system, like how valuable is it? Like, don't get me wrong. If you want to be a doctor or if you want to be a lawyer, you have to go get your degree. But I do think there are certain careers out there that you don't necessarily need your degree and if you do get your degree in it um it's still going to be really difficult to get into that industry yeah like a degree wouldn't necessarily guarantee anything for you wait what was it about psychology that you kind of went from psychology to retail like did you not like it at all like literally dude it was it was not rocket science like <laughs> i went to school were spike because I just think it's interesting. Um, and ironically, I also think, especially when you talk about cognitive psychology and, and when it comes to sales, um, I definitely think I utilize that in retail. But again, it's not like I own the retail store. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I worked for a large company and uh, it was actually a job that I had since I was 17. Graduated, got promoted into management at that job and then, con and then left the company, went to a different company, got like a a huge um, salary increase with that company. But again, I was still in retail, so I didn't really like it. But I do think sci understanding psychology yeah, is basics really did help me be more of a, I don't want to say people person, but I, I mean, I think sales in general are really important in any business. I think that's mm -hmm. why I was such a good man. I, I do believe I was a good manager in retail, yeah. even though I was super young. But yeah, I didn't want to freaking do it anymore. Do you think like, that, like, sorry, to own your own digital marketing agency, do you need to be an extrovert? I don't, you know what? I don't consider myself an extrovert, but I do think I'm more extroverted than other people. If you're completely to yourself, it might.